Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Let me tell you about the interesting story of Dr. James Barry. Cape Town has attracted some very interesting characters over the years. One of them is Dr. James Barry, a successful British military surgeon who worked hard to improve the lives of lepers, prisoners and soldiers and performed the first caesarean section in Africa. What makes Barry's life even more interesting is the fact that despite living her life as a man, she was a woman. What we know about her early life is a bit hazy. She was born Margaret Ann Bulkley around 1789. When her family fell on hard times, her mother came up with a plan to give her daughter a good start in life. This was well before women were able to study medicine, and so her mother enrolled her at Edinburgh University as a man, calling her James Barry. It seems Barry didn't identify as a man and wasn't transgender, so for the rest of the video I'm just going to continue to refer to her as a her. Barry excelled at medical school and completed her degree in 1812, becoming the first female medical graduate in Britain, despite no one knowing that. Thereafter, she took a job as a military surgeon. There's a good chance that she served in the Battle of Waterloo. After that, she went to India for a while before coming to Cape Town in 1815. Dr. Barry became the medical inspector of the Cape, and despite being only five feet tall, was quite a formidable character. She had these crazy red hair and three inch soles on the bottom of her shoes. And she used to stuff towels under her shirt to make herself look bigger, which earned her the nickname the Kapok Doctor. When she rode around Cape Town on her horse, she'd be in full dress uniform with a cocked hat and a massive dragoon sword by her side. She used to carry a parasol and she'd have a black poodle called Psyche who used to follow her around. Despite being a teetotaler herself, she often advised patients to bathe in Cape wine, probably for its antiseptic effect. Barry had a fierce temper and her favorite threat was to warn an adversary that she'd cut off their ears. She once got into this quite funny disagreement with a local vicar who sent her a letter asking Barry to remove a tooth. Barry thought this was well below her pay grade and responded by sending a farrier round to the vicar's house. When the farrier arrived to the vicar's house, he said, why are you here? To which the farrier responded saying, Dr. Barry told me there was a donkey that needed its tooth pulled. She later remarked that if the vicar had personally made this application, his cloth would not have saved his ears. The governor of the Cape, Lord Somerset and Barry, had a very close friendship and it was believed that he was one of the few people who knew her secret. One day Barry went to the Dutch Reformed Church in search of Somerset. Upon seeing that his bench was empty, she quickly got up and left. This didn't go unnoticed and a few days later, everyone in town had a laugh at an anonymous note that was posted to a tree. It read, with courteous devotion inspired, Barry came to the temple of prayer, but quickly turned round and retired when he found that his Lord was not there. Despite her aggressive personality, Dr. Barry was a very kind and concerned person, especially for those in need. She led sweeping reform across the Cape, especially in the jails where many people were still being ill-treated. She also did specific work with the lepers in Hill and Arda Valley, giving them appropriate medical care and human concern. This led Barry to often come into conflict with the officials who were placed in charge and she was once taken to court by a Mr. Fiscal for complaining about the medical officers in the jail. She responded by saying that if I had my sword on me when Mr. Fiscal proposed sending me to the trunk I should have cut off both his ears to make him look smart. Her aggression was certainly not misplaced during a time of history with so much exploitation of the poor and downtrodden. Her bedside manners were soft and compassionate, and one patient remarked that no man could show such sympathy for one in pain. Eventually, on her death, it was discovered that James Barry was in fact a woman. Obviously, that caused quite a scandal at the time. Although history might remember her as the woman who pretended to be a man, she was much more than that. Her medical reform saved countless people's lives and improved the living standards of many more. Today we're at the Roundhouse, where it's said that the ghost of James Barry still haunts to this day. Obviously there's no such thing as ghosts. It's all just...
you enjoyed this video and feel a burning desire within your heart to comment on it, to like it, to share it, to hit subscribe, don't hold back. Don't say to yourself, no, I'm not going to comment on it. Allow yourself the freedom to comment.